South Southeast Missouri State uh, head coach Tom Matukowicz, uh, the Red Hawks, 24-21 winners over uh, Tennessee Tech this past week. Uh, they'll be on the road. They're going to play at UT Martin. That'll be on Saturday. Um, coach, just uh, some thoughts on your team, and uh, then we'll go into some questions. I guess you guys can hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I just want to open it up with, uh, you know, um, we needed a win um and uh certainly uh enjoyed it and uh just i've always had a lot of respect for coach alexander uh you know when he came in and where the program is at to where it is now and um you know just says a lot about his ball club maybe even both ball clubs you know we both really needed a win and it could have been easy to one side or the other to shut it down you know we got up 21 nothing but their sideline responded and then they really won the game, you know, in the second, third quarters. And then uh, says a lot about our ball club to not get frustrated and start turning on each other and those type of things to find a way to win. Uh, Want to bring up, uh, you know, Willie Miller, their quarterback. Uh, you know, he was a, he played the whole game versus Murray and almost won. But I think he probably uh, wish he'd had a couple of those throws back and. I just want to congratulate him and obviously his coaches have done a good job coaching him because when I go and watch the film and that guy played really well, he was able to run the ball physical and tough. He was able to throw the ball. And if you have that kind of combination, man, you're, you're hard to get off the field. And so um, certainly I just want to uh, congratulate him on that and being, being coachable like that in those coaches. I think offensively, you know, we talked about big plays and, and Bunch being able to, to right off the bat hit a big play, I just think uh, was was needed because that's something we've been talking a lot about. Uh, Gino uh, ran so hard, so tough. Some of the, the unfortunately, uh, you know, some of his long runs were called back because of, of calls or whatever. But, man, I love the way he ran. Uh, Z Smith you know, probably had his career. He's been here a lot and he's played a lot and he had his career game and uh, guy's gone through a lot, a lot of adversity. And for him to have that kind of success is just a great teachable moment for the rest of the team. You know, guys that are unsatisfied with maybe the results they're getting. Um, but if you go watch the 2019 season uh, that he had versus the, the spring season, that just is a testament to his character. You know, defensively, uh, you know, it was, uh, you say, well, it was a good game or a bad game. I mean, we held them to 14 points. I feel like that, that last touchdown was on our offense, but, um, they just found a way to keep battling. Um, and tech did a great job. They stayed on the field, had long drives, able to stay on the field on third down. So, um, really, uh, you know, just a hard fought, tough win that, that, uh, says a lot. Um, you know, and as you could tell through all the scores, man, they're going to be all tight games. You got to find a way to win the game and, and really happy that we did. Now, uh, sites turn to Martin and, uh, we have a tremendous amount of respect for coach Simpson. He's kind of the Dean of the, um, the, the league, you know, he's been here the longest, had tr tremendous success. And, uh, I've actually, Appreciate him talking to me. I've reached out to him several times throughout my career here, and he's always been really helpful. I know they had a tough loss against TSU and uh, feel bad. Well, every time I feel bad about Coach Simpson, then I'm reminded that, you know, he's got a beautiful family with a kid that just signed with uh, Alabama, so I don't feel too bad for him. But I certainly respect him, how he runs his program, and uh, I, I can't wait to compete against him because this is why you do it. Like, if you could beat Coach Simpson and the, the Skyhawks, you've had a good day because you're not just going to show up and get it down. You have to beat them and execute and play hard and physical and tough and all those things. So we're excited. Thanks, Coach. Uh, that was good. Uh, we'll go to some questions, and uh, Tom Davis has some to start us off. Uh, Coach Martin has an uh, incredibly uh, productive passing attack. So uh, what concerns you or wh what's your game plan to try to control that to some degree? Well, I don't know. No one else has been able to. 
So, right. uh, you know, even if you go and look at Jacksonville State, man, number 11 and 15, you know, been great players for a while now, and they're having a great year. And uh, number 18, their quarterback is, is doing a tremendous job. So you're not going to go out there and stop them. Uh, you just have to manage it. Uh, you know, if you give up a big play, you got to tackle it, you know, and, and make, you know, make them kick field goals as they move the ball down there. But that's, that's, that's just, it, that's going to be a, a hard, hard piece of it. But as soon as you start, you know, trying to choke it out, then that's how you give up the big explosive plays and you get out of the game really quickly. Now, this quarterback is more of a drop back guy than, than a mobile athlete. Um, I'm sure he can probably move some, but yeah. um, is it making deep different or difficult from a defensive standpoint to prepare every week for such different types of quarterbacks that you see? Yeah, for sure. You got to change your mentality, rush lanes, third down mentality, all these things like you have to do a really good job um, because every quarterback's different. And so any any third down, two minute, any those type of situations, the first thing I go to is who's the quarterback? What's he do well? What does he not do well? And you got to try to make him beat you left handed. Um, OK, but that's you know, that's, that's easy for me to tell you and really hard to get done on, on game day. Um, after or, or prior to Sunday's game, you gave a scholarship to Clayton Gracie. Is that correct? Yeah. Um, I know most years you do that, you award a scholarship to somebody and that sort of thing. What's the, what's the criteria? Well, what made Clayton special that you thought, you know what, this is a kid that deserves this? Well, just like I said in the video, uh, the amount of adversity that he had to overcome, he lost his football coach's senior season. That was like a second father to him. He had a, he had a, bad back injury and so no one recruited him no one wanted him uh and you know he kind of bet on himself and walked on the division one football team and it hasn't been all rainbows and unicorns like years and years of being on scout team before he's ever even find a field and then uh i don't know if you noticed the reaction but when i always i always judge it by how his teammates react and I mean, they engulfed him and they were just, and, and that tells you all you need to know about what kind of teammate he is, but there's nothing on paper. Um, I, I try to, my goal in life is to be an equal opportunity program. We're going to let you rise and fall based on what you do and being able to give somebody what they earn is, is how it should be. And it's beautiful. And, you know, I do that for free. They pay me to talk to you. Um, <laughs> But that's the fun part about my job. And it was a challenge because money's a problem. You know, yeah. all these seniors that came back, we weren't planning to pay for. Right. And so we, I mean, we're basically out there with a car wash trying to get, get it funded so we can give him some money. But um, um, certainly, and I want him for the rest of his life to be able to tell people, if someone asks him, hey, why should we hire you? His answer needs to be, hey, I walked on a Division One football team and earned a scholarship. Like that tells you all you need to know about my character and about how I'm going to uh, show up every day and try to get my job done. All right. Um, last night or two nights ago, I think it was, Cal Poly opted out of FCS season. Illinois State and Chattanooga have as well. You spoke at length after Sunday's game about the injury list and, and how this is really a different type of season as far as injuries go. Any thoughts at all about opting out this year or any concerns uh, as you move into these last two weeks uh, with the injuries? Well, you, you know me fairly well. You know I got a lot of thoughts and a lot of opinions. <laughs> um, I'm not sure how many I want to share, but the, the thing about this time in life, like we just keep, there's always an excuse. There's always a reason to just shut it down. And, and you know, that's not what, we should be teaching people like when it's the hardest that's when your character shows up and you know it's never been about winning or losing here uh the goal of our program is to use the game to make better men like i believe that and winning's a part of that don't get me wrong but you know there's great teachable moments that even when it's not going your way we're not going to sit here and have a pity party even though if i just said hey i don't want to play i could probably get that done um 
but that, I mean, what, what does that teach people? And I'm not trying to speak on other people's situations, but don't right. take this as yeah. I'm judging these programs I have no idea about. Yeah. I'm just talking specifically about the Red Hawks here. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're going to enjoy these last two weeks we have together. All right. Uh, the seniors that uh, came back this spring, what's the timeline or what's the process uh, that you sit down and discuss fall of 2021 with them? When will that occur? Or will you give them two, three weeks after this season to kind of take a breath and reflect on everything and then talk about the future? Oh, yeah. I don't believe in you making any any major decisions. Uh, right after the season. So the, we'll basically go on a dead week. So the week after the, the football game, everybody needs to get away and not, you know, we just need to decompress and get our thoughts together. And I believe in, you know, a yearly plan. Like you have to decide, you know, I decide whether I got it, what it takes to coach this year. And then I'm going to decide the next year. And you got to decide if you got what it takes to play next year and you need to count the cost and are you truly committed? No one's going to be mad at you if you don't want to play. Like, I think we'd be mad if you say you want to play, but you don't really want to do what it takes to, to, to help this team be successful. And so, um, you know, I'd imagine uh, by the 1st of May, we'll have a good idea of the roster moving forward. Okay. Uh, last question for me. Uh, uh, we were c curious how the kicking game would look this year going into this spring because brand new piece uh, players and, and all that. And you had such – such a good kicking game last year. Uh, Jake Reynolds was a phenomenal punter. Uh, I didn't know what to expect from Zach Haynes, but Sunday he fields a really difficult snap, yet gets a good kickoff and all that. Talk about Zach Haynes' punting this spring and and what your your assessment of it has been. No, I mean, I'm glad you brought that up. And, you you, you know, it, it's – we didn't know. So right. uh, we, we thought he was a talented player, but we, we thought we would be developing him in the spring ball after Reynolds and all these things. And yeah. so uh, he's just taken that, that opportunity and really ran with it. Um, you know, he's more athletic than you think he is. And so I think that's the, that's the thing that was surprising because that was an unbelievable uh, catch. He used to catch the snap and then we're rugby and on top of it to get it out of there, let alone. Right. Maybe not being 47 yard net or something like that. And so he's done a good job in the pooch game too, you know, where we yeah. you know, got a ball inside of 10 or whatever that, that doesn't get talked about enough either. Uh, and so he's, he's been, I would say maybe one of the highlights of this, of the spring, like, man, to not know what you're going to get and to feel like, man, we got our punter on lockdown. All right. That works for me. Thanks. I appreciate it. Have a great day. Coach, appreciate your time this morning. Best of luck on Saturday, and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Kyle.